Hi, hi. My name is Bishop Ida Peter Side, and welcome to Ministerial Ethics. Again, we thank God for His grace, His mercies, especially to those of us that are in the ministry. These are trying times and trying moments, but the God that has called us is absolutely faithful. He said he's, He that called is able and faithful to perform it. So God is performing miracles in our lives, and we are grateful to Him. All right, this, this, today we're going to be looking at something a little bit, ministerial ethics, but we're going to be looking at the pastor and his wife. The pastor and his wife. Uh, you, you think because a man is a pastor, he has a, a perfect marriage. We've seen incidences and stories and reports where pastors are struggling with their wives. And again, we just have to ask God for grace because if you marry the wrong person, be it a male or a female, it will be worse. It will be worse than hell, you know, because the, the 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 greatest place to have the most peace is in your home. So there's a lot of struggle between pastors and pastors' wives, especially in this time of lockdown. Most pastors are always running to the church when there's a problem, when there are difficulties, are bound to stay in the house. They are locked down, and they, you know, even though things are opening up a little bit, but the pressure is still there. So I'm going to be looking at the pastor and his wife. And I think the reason why a lot of people are struggling, a lot of people are not happy in their homes, how I'm going to look into it and we'll just, you know, tell you the right things to do, what to really do. And if you, if you, if you do these things by the grace of God, you will have a happy home and your house will be full of joy. The pastor and his wife. Number one is you must love your wife more than the ministry. I know it's a, uh, the old church will not agree with me. There are a lot of people who think, uh, uh, what is he saying? This is the calling of God on my life. The first call, the first call on your life is your spouse. Your first pastor, the first person you must pastor is your wife. Then the second, your children, your children. So you, you are required by God. You are required by God. To love your wife. You can't be preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ to people you don't know. The people that you don't know where their houses are. Most of them you don't know their names. And you say, I love you in Jesus. Name. No, you are not telling the truth. You must love your wife. The Bible says you must love your wife as Christ loved the church and gave himself to her. Christ gave himself to the church. Therefore, Every pastor, your first responsibility is to give yourself to your wife. Your wife must be your shining light. Your wife must be your A, your A and your B, your C, your D, your Z. Everything must be wrapped up in your wife. For you to have a great ministry, for you to have a successful ministry. I have told this story over and over and over again. The Lord spoke to me when I started ministry. He said, I will judge you by your wife, my God. I will judge you by your wife. He says, I will judge you how you treat your wife. Anytime your wife is unhappy with you, I am unhappy with you. Anytime your wife complains about you, she's complaining to me about you. You need to treat her with love. She would have her mistakes. And remember, you are not in the same level. Most times, the man is not always on the same level with his wife. So the number one thing for a ministerial ethics, for your ministry to go right, for things to work out, hear me. The Bible says for the woman is the weaker sex. Weaker. Which means you are stronger than her. Maybe emotionally, maybe physically, maybe spiritually, you are stronger than her. And if she's the weaker sex, you cannot expect a weaker person to be like you, to be on fire like you. Yes, some women are on fire. To pray more than you. To, no, she is the weaker sex. The day she says she wants to sleep, let her sleep. The day she says, I'm tired, she's tired. Don't use your gym gym on her. Amen. So you must love your wife. Number two, she is not your member, but your wife. <laughs> Your wife is not your member. She is your member technically, 
but she is first your wife. Why? Because she is first your wife, you do not treat her like, your like she's a member of your church. Are you listening to me? There are how we treat our members. We know who our members are. We know how we talk to our members. Your wife is not your member. So don't just stand and treat your wife like member. Are you expected to portray on the ground or fly on the ground and call you prophet, bishop, pastor, daddy, mommy? No, 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 no. That's not how it should be. Yes, your wife can respect you. Your wife can put honor. You know, my wife says, you are my pastor. I agree. But she's my wife. She's not my member. So because she's not that, and she knows that once I get home, I leave that church thing behind. I leave the church thing and I treat my wife like my lover. I treat my wife like my friend. She is not my member. Because there are things you don't do with your members. There are places you don't go with your members. There are things you don't share with your members. So many pastors bring that kind of spirit into their house. I have seen pastors that cannot even undress in front of their wives. Is your wife your member? In the night you say switch off light. She is not your member. Your wife is your wife. So do not treat her the way you treat your secretary. Do not treat her the way you teach, treat your church worker. Do not treat her the way you treat your members. She is not your member. She is your wife. Both of you are one. Both of you are one. If your wife prays against you, you will, you will suffer. Your member can pray against you, you send back fire. If your wife prays against you, you can't send no fire. Because it's an internal matter. Are you listening to me? Therefore, your wife is not your member. For those of you that are women pastors, your husband is not your member. Treat your husband with honor and respect. He's not one of the people you push around. He's your husband. You make food for him, you prepare, you know, you treat him like a man. Like my wife, my wife is a lady. I treat her like a lady. I have young girls, old women, middle class people in our church. Yes, they're there. But who cares? My care is first to my wife. So your wife is not your member. Number three, never correct your wife in public. <laughs> Yeah, bishop, archbishop, apostolic apostle. Never correct your wife in public. That is, don't make a public spectacle of her. She's your wife. Mostly she's the mother of your children. Don't treat her like an ordinary person. We call them life partners. She's your fellow worker in the vineyard. She is your encourager. She is your helper. You don't put her down. You don't talk her down. There are men of God that are careless with their mouths. You see them talk to their wives. You think their wife is a child. You see them abuse their wives uh, in public. It's a shame. These are not ethics. These are not um, ethics, uh, ministerial ethics, or things that are expected from a man of God. Your wife, you never correct her in public. Number, number four, do not bring your marriage challenge to the altar. Home is home. Altar is about Jesus. Altar, you, me, I tell stories about my wife, but good stories. You can never see me tell nonsense about my wife. And so I spoke to my wife the other day. Oh, oh my wife, there's... And she comes, like, hey, you always mention in my name. I say, but I never put you down. I will never put you down. Do not bring, but now, it's good testimonies I share. Now, there are things, challenges that we might be going through as a couple. There are issues of husband and wife that we might be going through. You can't stand on the altar and, and say, this my wife can't even kiss. Can't even kiss me. Well, me, I told the story. I said, before I married my wife, she has never kissed any man. I can never come back after we have finished marriage. I come and tell you how my wife is kissing. That's my business. So you don't take the challenge, especially I didn't, I didn't, say, I don't, I didn't say testimonies. 
And it's a testimony. You can bring a testimony. I and my wife believed God for this miracle. We got a miracle. But when it concerns challenges that will show weaknesses. Are you following what I'm saying? When it concerns challenges that will show weaknesses. You cannot bring. My wife slapped me yesterday. I don't know all of you think this woman is a woman of God. But if you see the slap, she slapped me. I've told her the next time you slap me, I'll kill you. Eh? Pastor. You don't do that. You don't do that. Your job is to cover her. Your job is to cover her. Even if she urinates on the bed, the world cannot hear it. Even if she's going through tough times, the world cannot hear it. But the world can hear testimonies of the good things that God is doing with you, through you, and in your family. So do not bring your money. Be careful. Just watch your mouth. What, I know we like to talk as pastors. We're excited about telling stories. But there are stories that must not come out from the bedroom. There are stories that must not leave your house. Are you listening to me? Let others do what they want to do. But your wife, the story between you and your spouse. Don't bring the challenges, especially the challenge between a man and a woman. My wife can't even perform on the bed. Eh? And you're telling us that? And all these hawk, hawk like sisters. Are everywhere listening, looking for how to pull you and your ministry down. And every time you talk and you try to demean your wife, there are Jezebel spirits, women of Jezebel that are there, looking for how to penetrate your home and tear down your marriage. When you hear me talk, I talk of my wife glowing, even if you are tempted to come after me. You, when you compare with what I'm saying about her and your own life, you run away. No chance. No chance. So you must understand, do not bring, we're talking about ministerial ethics, do not bring your marriage challenges to the altar. Then, number five, number five. Pastor, give your wife money. <laughs> Did you hear me? Give, don't chop alone. As the Lord is blessing you, let it be expressed in the life of your wife. There are pastors, you see them with their new suits and clean clothes and beautiful ties. These nice perfumes. Once you see their wives, you regret. You say, what kind of woman is this? Or why is this woman like this? You know why? Because the man of God is only after the man and does not look after his wife. Your wife must smell nice. Your wife must be groomed. That is why it is called uh, bridegroom. Your job is to groom the bride. Make sure that your wife is well dressed. Make sure that your wife is looked after. Not just, don't always go and buy her things. Oh. Give her money. Don't always go and buy. Some men, stingy men, they buy soap, they buy soup. Did you hear what I said? They buy the soap, they buy the soup. You can't say your wife, hold this money and buy what you want to buy for yourself. They want to control what she wears. They want to control this and control that. They don't give their wives money. And you can't, you see them, the wives look tattered. In ministry, both of you, both of you, God has called her as a helper. She might not be the preacher. But God has called her to preach. I mean, to, to be a blessing to you. This one, I hope children are not there. Your wife is not a wood. Neither is your wife your sister. Your wife, you must make love to your wife. Don't always be on a mountain top. You come from this mountain and you go to that mountain. From that mountain, you, I, a woman came to report to me. He said, speak to one of your sons. I'm tired of this marriage. I said, what is the problem? He said, my, this, my, uh, uh, my, my, my husband has not touched me for nine months. I said, what? I said, is she, a, is she pregnancy? For nine months, I rebuked this man. I said, well, he said, no, you know, every time I, am, I want to pray, she always, I said, she always what? I listen, I'm talking about ministerial ethics. You cannot starve your wife of lovemaking. You cannot starve your wife of, of having sex with her. 
because you want to go to one mountain. You are fasting. What are you fasting for? For 40 days every day. 40 days. You come from one fasting. You go to another fasting. You come from another fasting. Listen, I fast. Don't think I don't fast. I fast more than most of you are listening to me and looking at me. You understand? I fast. The fast is for my benefit, not for the benefit of God. I speak to my wife. I say, look, on Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday, I'm going to be in a fast. But because she's a woman of God, she, she understands the kind of job that God has called me. You understand? She understands it's easy. But you cannot always you do, if, do 21 days. The next day you do 48 days. There are pastors, all these our CEOs and uh, our GOs. They can't sleep with women anymore. They are finished. They are old. So they put 40 days and 90 days fasting just to use it to cover themselves. And the woman is busy dying there, but they already know that the woman, that the man can't even perform. Don't go and follow them. You are 25, 35, 40 years. You go and take 48 days fasting and 60 days fasting. And the woman is suffering there. Tomorrow you say your wife is cheating on you. Don't always be in the mountain. Climb mountain, come down. Stay down for longer than you are climbing the mountain. God is not moved by all the fasting and all the prayer. God is moved by the obedience of his word. That is what moves God. He says to obey is better than what? Than sacrifice. So you must spend time with your wife. The next one is fellowship with your wife. When I say fellowship with your wife, don't be too uh, 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 churchous or too righteous that you don't take your wife out. What is the matter with us? You don't take your wife to restaurants. You don't eat out with your wife. You don't go and watch movies with your wife. Nobody's saying go and watch nonsense. But leave the house. Leave the children. Leave the church. Take your wife and go. Me, I go to stadium to watch football. I go and watch wrestling. When the wrestling people come here, I buy my ticket a long time to go and watch them. I need to clear my head. I go watch movies. If you want to get angry, that's your business. I take my wife out to nice restaurants. We go and eat out. We say, everybody stay at home. Let me go and spend time with my wife. She's not in log, a log book. I'm, this is ministers. I'm talking to pastors. Maybe sometime you've not had this kind of thing. But I want to change your life. Are you listening to me? I want you to be happy. We will not die. If you, this, is, this work we're doing, you will die and leave it. I just lost my brother and I did the ministry is still there. You will die. All the scriptures he's been quoting, it's finished. Maybe he's written books or written some few things that posterity will help him. But his son took over the next Sunday. And as he was saying, that's what he was, everything you know, as my father was saying, the ministry is going. Well, while you're here on earth, why punish this woman? Why are you punishing your wife because of the gospel? Why are you punishing your wife because you say you're a preacher? You're a prophet. You understand? God does not need permission to speak to you. You don't need to shout at God to hear God. God can speak to you anywhere. God can minister to you, give you instructions anywhere. You need to make love to your wife. The next one. Do not sleep in the church. Do not sleep in the church. What is bed doing in your church, in your office? Ah, sometimes I want to do all night. If you're doing all night, you sit on the bed. It's not you go to your altar or you lie on the floor. You put bed every time for siesta, for lunch. You've not told us what that bed is doing in that church. What are you sleeping in the office when you have a bed and you have your wife and you have a home? What madness is this? What madness is this? If you want to spend time, or you can have a spare room. And you say, my wife, I want to go and spend some God, time with God. And your wife is at peace. Her heart is at peace. She knows my husband is in the other room. But you say you are going to sleep in the church. How are we sure you are inside that church? No, no, this is the true story. We must grow up. We must grow up. Amen. It is God that rewards us. 
And it is God that has this reward system. If God gives you an instruction and says, sleep on the altar for three weeks, you go to your wife. I say, daddy said, I should spend three weeks on this altar. I will come home, I will take a shower by night, 11 o'clock or 10 o'clock. You understand what I'm saying? I will come to the altar and wait on the Lord for the next three weeks. Even your wife knows that you are not a, uh, you are, you are not a gangster. Your wife understands that if God has spoken to my wife like this, my husband or my wife, then it is real. Because not every time you come again ahead, that altar, I'm going back to, no, no, you're not going anywhere. If me and your wife, I'll hold your shirt. I say, honey, me and you will go to that altar. You say, no, you can't come with me, you distract me. There's no wife that can distract you when it's time for prayer. I was speaking, these are many, there are, there are young people that are coming out without control. There are young people that are growing up without control. Young ministers that are growing up without control. No, no, the anointing must be controlled by heaven and according to the word of God. So there are ethics. These ethics we must follow. And as long as we follow these ethics, God will encourage us. God will, it is God that added to the church daily. You think it's your noise making? No, no, it's grace. When grace is made available, then people will come to you. So mightly grew the word. You understand? So mightly grew the word. It is God that grows the word. There are people that will not have a 10,000 church. If you like, go and stay in Mount Calvary and try to replace Jesus. He gives us measures, the one we can have. He knows my weight and he knows your weight. I'm not saying be careless. I'm not saying don't spend time with God. But that bed that is in your office, what is it doing there? Amen. And some men that are Jim Jim now will come begin to write and say, what are you talking about? No, no, no. I've been around. My old father was a pastor. He pastored for 40 something years. We never see him sleep in the church. And God used him mightily to save lives. Go home. <laughs> Somebody say go home. Go home to your wife and children. Leave this office. Go home. And go and fix your marriage. Hallelujah. Amen. Again, the next one is, uh, your wife must not always fast with you. God called you and not her. We put on due pressure on our wives as pastors. Hey, I'm fasting. Won't you fast with me? Ah, me, I will eat. Oh. God called you. I'm only here to help you to cook the food for you when you are ready. Your wife must not always partake in spiritual assignments with you. All of us have different calls and different methods and application. Okay, the whole house, we are fasting. No, 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 you don't do that. You know, that fast, you say, it's a, it's a personal relationship. You can say, okay, as a family, there's an issue. We want us to fast for. Uh, on Monday, the house, the children will fast for two hours. The wife will fast for 12 hours. I will fast for... 18 hours, you know, that kind of thing. If you want to teach them godly life. But one of the things I've learned with children, they want to see examples. And once you show them examples, they will follow those examples. It is very important. Your wife must not always fast with you. God called you and not her. If she has a, a call on her life, God will convict her to do her own fasting. I hope you're gaining something and the Lord is ministering to you. This is ministerial ethics. We're about to finish. Do not expect your wife to preach. <laughs> Do not expect your wife to preach. Don't wake up my wife, you're preaching this Sunday. No, no, ask her. Are you led to minister? Are you led to preach? You know, we have, we have caused a lot of havoc. God calls the pastor. Are you listening? Most times when God calls a pastor, we call our wife. This woman is frustrated. Maybe her assignment is just to be in the children's department and look after the children. But no, first lady, first lady, you put undue pressure on her. You put undue, unnecessary pressure. She begins to learn what she's not called to be. And then she will make mistakes and people will laugh at her. And then she will get fed up. Then she will get tired of God. Then she will get tired of the marriage. Then she will get tired of you. 
because you are putting a load on her that God did not call her to do. There is nothing wrong if your wife is there and there's a lady that can preach or a lady that can handle the department. Give it to her. Let's forget all these things, this nonsense we are doing in the church because the wife is the wife then she must be first lady. What is first lady again? In the Bible, first lady, she's your wife. Once she's your wife, she's your wife. Nobody can take that title from her. Yes, she can help you run things if she has grace. If there's a grace that is available on her, then she will use where her grace is. For my, for my wife, my wife loves to teach young people. She loves to teach young people. The day you say, go and preach, she says, ah. But once you tell her young people, she gets excited. Unmarried people, young people, even women now, she, she even wonders at these women. Most of them are older than me. I don't even know what I'm going to tell them. But the kids excite her. You understand? So I, I find out where she has excitement. And I push her there. Encourage her to, to, to fulfill the ministry that God has called her to do. Finally, pay your wife. I said this when I did the teaching on finances. Pay your wife as a pastor. If you are in a place where you are able to, maybe you are the head of the church, you are, the, uh, you are leading a particular ministry. When I say give your wife money, it's a different thing from this one. No? Give your wife money, that's your money. But pay your wife. Pay her. Because the payment you give to her, like I've always said, the payment you give to her relieves her. Then she can do things on her own without you coming to dictate you know, my own wife decides she just goes to the shop and buys things for the family. I come one day, I say, oh, she's bought this for me. She has to have liberty with her fin with finances. Because most pastors, their wives don't work. But if your wife is working so well, then you don't need to pay her because where she's working, she's getting an income. You don't need to pay her. But once she's staying with you, helping out in ministry here and there, you need to make sure you pay your wife. Finally, Always pray with your wife, especially in the night. For me, what I do in the morning, I pray because I need, I need to speak to my morning. I start my day. But every night, if, no matter where I am, you must cultivate the habit of praying, for your, praying with your wife. You must pray with your wife. You must pray. I have one more again that the Holy Spirit is ministering that one into my heart. You must spend time before you go to bed, hold your hands and pray together. When two of us agree upon a thing, we get more answers or better answers. We get better results. So it is important that every night, no matter where you are, don't spend time in the church and when you come back, everybody's sleeping. No, come back home. Come back home and pray with your wife. Finally, share your problems with your wife. This is the biggest cause of adultery. This is the biggest cause of unfaithfulness among pastors. Don't share your problems with sisters. Did you hear what I'm saying? Whether the sister is from heaven, whether she sounds like an angel, whether she looks like a, a, a angel Gabriel's nephew, don't share your problems with a sister in the church. If you have pressure, you're feeling tired, you are stressed, come back to your wife. She's your helper. What is the difference between that woman and her? Hey, if I tell my wife, hey, because your home is already messed up. But if you know how you've been building your home, there is nothing I don't tell my wife. Pains, my body is paining me, my leg is paining me. I can't breathe, I'm stressed. And you see my wife <laughs> walk into a gear, she just changes the gear and turns to a helper. My wife will tell me, today, you're not going anywhere. I say, what are you if you like, talk from now to thy kingdom come, you will rest. Your wife was, my wife would say, oh, you will not eat this food. Say, you cannot leave me here and go anywhere. Are you listening to me? 
Your wife is not your enemy. Your husband is not your enemy. Share your problems. Share your dreams. Share your secrets. You understand? I believe in God. Hey, I'm planning. I, I really want to start a radio station. Please pray with me. I, I really want to start a school. Please pray with me. Share these deep secrets. Because members, when they leave, they never tell you. Members, that one you are counting on, that one that said I would die for you. We've had it so many times. You are my greatest pastor. You are my papa. You are my mama. You are everything to me. When they leave, they live like the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit comes in like a wind. He lives quietly. Whew. The Bible says, and something wills not that the Spirit had departed. Nobody knows. <laughs> he said, let me go. I'm still fight. Let me go. He's gone. That's how members are. One week, two week, three week, two week, three week. He said, why is this man? I've not seen him. Uh, uh, uh. They will Papa, preach Papa, teach Papa. But that woman, when others leave you, she will be by your side. One of the days we'll be talking about children, pastors and their children, how you treat children. I was a PK. <laughs> I will teach you one of these days in our ministerial ethics. And I believe that God has spoken to you today. We want to hear from you. Okay? There are email addresses on the place. Write me. Let's talk. I do reply. Those emails. Pastor Ida at gmail.com. I read those emails. And I will reply you. And if you need counsel, if you need to talk to me, please call our church office or just get across to me. I will. I promise you. I will get back to you. Until next time. You're watching ministerial ethics. May God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen.